Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton for EMS Now. I'm here at Apex 2013 in San Diego, California, and I'm joined by Sri Bagwat from IPC and Eric Miskell from Charlie Barnhart and Associates. Thanks for joining me, guys. What I wanted to explore a little bit today is um, the competitive landscape here in the Americas, but specifically with respect to uh, Mexico. Um, it's kind of Mexico's been around there as a, as a place to manufacture for some time, and it's been pointed out as a potential competitor for China, kind of China in your own backyard is the, is the story we've, we've heard and we've been told. Is it competitive? Can it compete? And has some of the its bad publicity been incorrect? I know, Sri, you've been involved in some market research into that area. What have, what have you found? What have you seen? Yes, I just did a report on uh, outlook of Latin America uh -huh. in terms of electronic industry. And Mexico is really coming up in a big way. Because if you see last two decades, it was all about China. So, you know, now all the member companies have started talking about Latin America. And then if you see the economic growth the Latin America had previously, you know, in 2009, 10, it was phenomenal. So all of a sudden, everybody is trying to concentrate in this, you know, South American country. And Mexico has a benefit because it has, like, free trade agreements with 44 countries. So, you know, it's, the business environment is very, compared to any other country, it's really very good. So, and then, as you say, like in China, people said the labor costs were cheaper, and that's why everybody was going to China. But if you go to see, like, I think there was an article in Wall Street last week, and I think it's a research done by HSBC, and it was very clear, I think, in, in the last decade, in 2000, if you look at the cost of wages, it was like 30 cents in China, and it was a dollar and 60 cents up in Mexico. In 10 years, China has gone from 30 cents to one dollar and 60 cents, and they have gone from 1.5, I think, to 2.1. Okay. So look at the difference, yeah, it's like a trend. trend, right? Yeah. So China is really catching up and becoming more expensive, and then you have the logistic cost. And they're right here at the yeah, backyard. Yeah, so yeah. logistic-wise, it makes a lot of it sense, too. Sense. Yes, and yeah. the wages, I think they're not that bad either. Yeah. yeah, and Eric, just coming to you, it's not all about it's not all about the hourly rate. So first, tell me why it's not all about the hourly rate and the other benefits of Mexico, but also why has Mexico struggled for so long? I mean, my sense is that it's been a little bit of a it's almost a lemming mindset that's pushed us out to Asia rather than considering elsewhere. Yeah, now Mexico has been a great solution for many years. It was the, the solution, electronics manufacturing wise, obviously, um, was one that was developed and fostered first, right? Yeah. And, it's, and, and it is the best low cost region in North America. Has been, will be, I agree. It's absolutely yeah. on the ascendancy again. And it did suffer with the China. And, you know, we've looked into that. And, and you know, there was this whole whispering campaign within the industry about quality issues in Mexico. And, you know, that was nonsense. There, there were no quality issues in Mexico. There's, there's quality issues throughout the industry. So to, to pick on one geography like that was, was a little unfair. We've looked into that. There, there's nothing to substantiate that over the years. What it was really was they needed to get, get it. Wall Street convinced everybody that China and you got to get these low labor rates and you know it's that mythical dollar an hour labor rate at, at anywhere and it, you know it's not a dollar an hour it's not a dollar an hour anywhere it's you know it is when you're paying just that but you know you're not paying just the dollar an hour you're paying a fully burdened cost of labor that in like in China's case I mean it, it's many times that right yeah. China's in the teens raising into the 20s Mexico's you know somewhere around 12 bucks an hour going up to over 14 bucks an hour by the end of this year yeah. on a fully burdened and and if you have to look at the fully burdened because that's what that's what the yeah. EMS company yeah. is it, those are the costs right yeah. they, they have to get those back from their customers so um, many OEMs and we've done we've looked at this where the uh, don't understand that right yeah. and they think well it's just that what's yeah. that you we'll know well yeah. The, it, it's, it's a factor of rate and time. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I'll give you that dollar, but then I'm gonna increase the time associated with yeah. it. Many people are just happy to see that dollar or the 60 yep. cents yep. or whatever it is. Yeah. 
and, and, and so there's really a disconnect there. Yeah. But Mexico, we see as a fantastic solution, certainly on the ascendancy, um, for the right things. China's a great solution. This isn't about China bashing exactly. in any way. China, there's a lot of things should be in China, are in China, should stay in China. Yeah. Mexico benefits from proximity to yeah. the North American market. Um, and what we're telling our clients is if you, if you don't, if you're wanting to, to leverage Mexico, and if you haven't started that already, you know, you're behind the eight ball already. Yeah. Because that, mm -hmm. most companies are doing that, most companies are driving that. Yeah. Revenue out of that region will probably double in the next three years, probably quadruple in the next 10 years. Wow. It's booming. Yeah, it is yep. booming. And Sri, from, from a point of view of, of the kind of products that, that fit Mexico, I mean, maybe it's not the iPhone, maybe it's not those kind of... It's mostly maybe. medical. Right. It's the medical device industry, it's the automotive, and it is the, which one was the aerospace? Aerospace, yeah. Like a mm -hmm. lot of Canadian aerospace OEMs, mm -hmm. they have their facilities mm -hmm. in uh, Mexico. Mexico. And a lot of medical industry, I think majority, 80% of it is exported to US, mm -hmm. and then the rest of it is exported to Europe okay. from Mexico. Mm -hmm. So, from Mexico, yes. Europe. And there's a lot of other companies like the consumer electronics, yeah. the refrigerator, the video, you know. Okay, it's the kind of like it's, yeah. 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 the appliances. The appliance industry, yeah. 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 And, it, and, it, and because of the proximity to North America, does that mean they're doing direct fulfillment, they're doing configure to order, build to order, those kind of things that local supply chain works very well in? I think they're just wanting another base facility, like a lot of the OEMs, so they think from Mexico, it's easier. As I said, it's a very business-friendly environment. Yeah. So it's easier for them to export to Europe, to yeah. North America, and they can also capture some of the Latin American market okay. from Mexico. So I think mm -hmm. we do, I mean, I see all like Foxconn, Flextronic, j -Bill, everyone is there in mm -hmm. Mexico. Yeah. All of the big OEMs from medical industry yeah. are up mm -hmm. yeah. in Mexico. So. Okay, and in terms of, of, um, of exporting for example to South America but also in terms of their own domestic domestic marketplace do, do they have a growing I mean, you know one of the issues in China is a growing middle class that are going to consume more of the products that are manufactured there and that's really I guess what Brazil is pushing for example is that the case in Mexico or is Mexico much more of an export economy well you know real quick name one electronics OEM indigenous to Mexico. Yeah. There aren't any, right? Yeah. I mean, of, of note. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it's it's built for export primarily. Right. Um, and it's very good at that, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, listen, Mexico has its issues, right? Yeah. Mexico has its problems. Um, and, uh, and it's not, you know, some may be quality, some is logistics, you know? If you're building in central Mexico and, you know, mm -hmm. busing it, shipping it, uh, you yeah. know, by train, uh, by, by right. truck or whatever, you know, there's issues. There's logistics costs right. to get that up. There's security issues that have been plaguing Mexico for a yeah. long time. Um, there's uh, there's issues in any Mexican facility. There's uh, what we like to call uh, material attrition issues. Right. Um, and those are, you know, that's probably true in, with most factories around the world, though. That's yeah. not yeah. unique to Mexico, yeah. which just means that that doesn't mean that that's you avoid Mexico. That means you put in place processes to manage that yeah. issue. Right. Yeah. Um, Mexico has great engineering schools. Well, I was going to say, what's the what's the um, skills skills profile like? World class, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of education, and in terms it of is. new people coming to the market, because certainly right. in North America and certainly in Europe, there's a real lack of apprenticeships and people people what people wanting to graduate in electronics or engineering mm -hmm. when they could be graduating in law or film studies or right. You know, there are a lot more. I think it was a Germany, a German uh, company who was saying that in Mexico you have a lot of engineers coming out yeah. in the workforce. Mm -hmm. Graduates, they think it's going to be more than what they produce. Uh, yeah. Students come out from Germany. Yeah. So in that way, it's a good workforce you have. Yeah. So yeah. you know, it's a competitive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I guess to a degree, it's it's uh, it's about it's about the region promoting itself properly, and it's about those probably about those contract manufacturers really committed yeah. to promoting their activities there, the Flextronics, the Foxconns. Yeah. And, the and I think that the whole trend towards you know regionalization, build in region, mm -hmm. you see that in the in the utilization rates, capacity utilization rates in yeah. Mexico. You know 
which you know it's starting to it's starting to get full, which means it. Prices are going to go up. Lead times yeah. on getting things delivered yeah. are going to extend. Yeah. It's a supply and demand thing, yeah. and uh, and I and, and I think people are going to be a little less interested in investing greenfielding, doing that. It's let's leverage what we have there, and and I would say the greatest testament to Mexico is that you see Chinese companies investing there yeah. as well. Yes. Right. Yeah. So. And I guess three. The bottom. The bottom line is it's it's not it's not about either or. It's not about saying let's let's take Mexico instead of China. It's it's about having a pragmatic landscape for manufacturing yeah. globally that, that, that suits demand. Okay. Well, guys, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for chatting. I enjoyed that, and I uh, hope we can speak again soon. Thank you. Thank you.